Hi everybody, I'm Rick Beato. In this episode of Everything Music, we're going to discuss how to mic, EQ, and compress an acoustic guitar. It's coming up next. Okay, so I want to talk about the guitar that I'm using uh, for this. We're going to be using with, uh, with Rhett, who's going to be playing guitar. This is a 1957 Gibson Country and Western uh, guitar. It is a really great sounding guitar for recording. I've used it on a million records, um, and it's a, got a really full sound without having a super deep bass, and it's got a very balanced mid-range with a lot of, um, lot of harmonics to it. We're going to be using multiple microphones. I'm going to start out with a um, with a blue mic that's called a Dragonfly um, Special Edition. That they only made about 250 of them. I'm going to go through different ones. I'm going to use um, a condenser mic. I'm going to use a 57 and show you how they sound different. I'm also going to use uh, some small diaphragm condenser mics in a stereo miking pattern. So let's get started with it. Okay, typical microphone placement for a single microphone that I find always sounds great is at about a 45 degree angle to the guitar pointing right towards the end of the fingerboard there as you can see it's literally looking right here on the guitar that will cut down on the low frequency uh, rumble that you get any woofiness and any air blast that comes out of the hole that's about six to seven inches away from the guitar and I might adjust it a bit but that's a really good starting spot Okay, so this is Rhett Shull playing guitar here. The mic we're going to be using first is a Blue Dragonfly Special Edition. It came out around the year 2001-2002. It's, uh, it's a Dragonfly Deluxe. It has the internal workings of a Blue Dragonfly. But the capsule is similar to their Kiwi microphone, one of their highest end microphones, which is very similar to an AKG C12. Typically when I record acoustic guitar, I will use a just single channel mic pre, obviously with a, uh, with a single compressor. In this instance, I'm going to use a Neve 1081 mic pre going through a Distressor by Empirical Labs. It's a pretty, pretty straight ahead setup. The reason I'm using the 1081 instead of, let's say, a 1073 is it because it has um, more options on the mid-range for EQ. I'm going to try and get it as close as I can to the sound that I want uh, in mic placement and the microphone. But if I have to EQ it, I want to have something that's got a lot of versatility and a lot of different EQ points. So let's check it out. The mic pre I'm going to be using is a Neve 1081. This is a volume control on it. It's got some uh, cues here. It's got a high cue here and it's got a tighter, uh, tighter cue uh, buttons there. I usually leave, leave them in. This is your top end. It starts at 3.3K and it goes all the way up to 15K. Uh, on this upper mids, it starts at 1.5 and it goes all the way up to 8.2. There's a lot of bands, 1.5, 1.8, 2.2, 2.7, 3.3, .3, and so on and so forth. We're going to be using that a lot. Then it's got the, uh, the low mids, which begins at 220. 270, 330, 390, 470, 560, 680, and all the way up to 1200 or 1.2K. And this is our low end here. And this is uh, begins down at 33 hertz, 56, 100, 180, and 330. Right here is our filters. It's got our high pass filters on the inside with the silver knob. And the low pass filter is here, which turns in the opposite direction, uh, is goes that way each of them have um one two three four five so it's it's five bands of of here's your high shot or your uh, high pass filter height and here's your low pass filter you can see it shows with the diagram what it looks like there that's your neve 1081 here's your phase button your eq button that we'll be using this is the empirical lab distressors i've got two of them because i'm going to be compressing two different microphones when i mic the guitar in stereo so i have a set in basic range here this is at about five and a half for the input now i don't know how much level i'm going to get until i set it up i've got the attack at a fairly uh you know mid attack time so it's not too fast so it's not catching the transients you're still getting a lot of attack and i have a very quick release time to start I might actually probably pop it up to three and a half to begin with on both of those, even though I'm going to only be using 
this top one at first. So I'm running at a four to one ratio and I've got the high pass filters engaged on both those and both sets of those. That's a good starting point with this particular microphone and mic pre combination. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back off the input on it a little bit. So that's just hitting maybe three dB of compression, just on the loud notes. I have the high pass engaged on both. I'm running a fairly slow attack here at five and a half. And the release is pretty fast, one and a half. Now my level into the computer looks pretty good, not too hot. I'm going to engage the EQ. I've already got a little bit of 10K put in. Then I'm going to put a little 2.2K in. Then try a little 2.7. That's 1.8. That's 2.2. Disengage. It just gives a little extra brilliance. You don't want to go too nuts on here. Okay, it's a pretty good sound here. I've got the high pass filter engaged at 47 hertz just to take out any low end rumble. Okay, I'm going to check the compression uh, level again. Just hitting it very lightly. I'm going to hit it a little bit harder. It's helping it with the tone by making it a little bit more compressed sounding. It's a good sound. Now we're going to move on to our next miking setup, which will feature an SM57 as the microphone of choice. The difference with this SM57 is that it is a transformerless Zen Pro Audio um, transformerless. I had it actually made uh without a transformer and it really sounds good it opens up the sound of the guitar and this is for people that can't really afford to have super expensive condenser mics whoops here let's see how close it is it's probably only about three inches away from the strings pointing once again right towards the end of the fingerboard Brett's going to do a finger picking part again so let's check that out and see what it sounds like so i'm going to head back over here i've hardly got any level here so i'm going to come back over and re-engage the compressor giving me very little compression I'm going to increase the input and then turn down the output a little bit. Now I'm going to engage the EQ. Let me go back to flat for a second. I'm going up a little bit higher with it taking some of the 10k off. This particular microphone, or SM57s, have a little bit of a bump at 5.5K, so I don't need quite as much top end, but I am boosting it at 2.7 with a tight Q. And this is how much compression I have right here. Not a lot, maybe minus 3 dB on some hits. And here's what it looks like in the computer. Yeah. Okay, brought down the mic pre a little bit because he's strumming. You can see it here in the compressor. I'm gonna engage the compressor. The compressor's hitting around five dB a gain reduction reduction. Remember, once you have the compression on the track, there's nothing you can do after. Better to do a little now and more later than doing too much at the beginning. I'm adjusting the mid-range right now. I'm going to add a little bit of 680 or so just to kind of fill it out a bit. It'll give the guitar a little bit more body in the mid-range. This will help the top strings not dominate the sound of the guitar, so I'm accentuating those mids. That's 
a surprisingly good tone for a 57. Okay, this next mic we're going to use here is a an old Sound Deluxe iFET 7, but this has been modded by David Bach, and it has a the capsule of a um, U47 FET Neumann capsule in it. So it's basically like an uh, like a 47 FET, except it's got two different settings. So it's got a voice setting and instrument setting. It's actually on the voice setting, which emulates an old uh, like a vintage U87. So we're going to record this from about the same distance, maybe a little bit further back, but same angle towards the end of the fingerboard. And we're going to see what this one sounds like. I have this iFET 7 set a little bit louder because it's not quite as loud as the blue mic. I don't have the EQ engaged and our compression is pretty much where it was. I'm going to lengthen the release a little bit because of the slower tempo. Release time with compressors is very tempo dependent. I'm going to engage the EQ flat. I'm going to add a little 2.7 and a little 10k. Bring it down to 47 on the low end roll off. I'm going to pop it out, put it back in. That sounds good. Okay, we're going to do strumming now with the same microphone, the iFET 7. Engage the EQ again. There's a little buzziness on the top end. I'm putting in a little boost at 2.2 so a little bit lower than before to try and bring out some of the inner strings so the ringiness of the open B and E string is not so dominant. I'm hitting the compressor a little bit harder. There's a few spikes, it hits maybe 5 dB of gain reduction or so, but it's pretty good. So I'm gonna be recording an acoustic guitar right now with two microphones, Rhett's gonna play. I've got the microphone on the body, which is gonna be an audience perspective, and then the microphone, so that's gonna be on the in the left speaker, and then the microphone on the neck will be in the right speaker, and I have them hard panned. Check it out. I've got two Neumann KM184s out in front of the guitar and let me swing it around here so you can see where they are. There's one there. It's kind of uh, pointing at the body of the guitar and the other one's pointing at the 12th fret if you can see that. And they're both about uh, probably about five inches from the guitar. That's going to give me a nice stereo spread. It's not the arm is not going to be in the way of the uh, of the mic on the body and the finger noise from your fingers are not going to be involved because they're usually down below the twelfth fret there, especially playing a rhythm part like that. So that's one of the reasons why I mic it like that. In the left speaker, I have the body of the guitar, and in the right speaker, I have the neck microphone. So it's an audience perspective. I've matched the two EQs. Buttons get a little scratchy after a few years. Just gotta press them real fast. Now to check the phase, I'm gonna flip one of them out of phase and you'll hear the guitar sound completely collapses. That's how I know that my guitar is perfectly in phase. Now if we take a look at the compressors, you can see one of the reasons I use the distressors is because I have two of them. And it's very easy to demonstrate the uh, compression levels because of the lights. That's a pretty good sound. I'm going to push the EQ out and then put it back in. 
sounds great. Okay, let's hear the same stereo miking with a strumming pattern. Okay, we're gonna see that it's hitting the compressor a lot harder with the strumming. So what I'm gonna do is back off the input a little bit. I don't wanna get more than, let's say 3 dB of gain reduction because you can always compress it more later. But if you compress it too much going in, you're stuck. I've got a fast release. I've got a medium attack on it. That sounds pretty good. There are many different ways to mic an acoustic guitar. If you go to Nashville on a session, it's very common to use the space pair, but they'll probably use two different mics. Like um, the last time I was there, we used a C12 on the body and we used a KM54 tube small diaphragm condenser. I believe it was a KM54, maybe 53. Um, but used two different microphones, but same space pair idea. You don't have to have a $20,000 mic and a $5,000 mic. You can do it with two nice condenser mics that are not super expensive, you know, road mics or uh, there's plenty of, uh, you know, sure small diaphragm condensers, the, the KSM 141s. Uh, there's plenty of choices for that, so you don't have to spend a fortune for it. The bottom line with recording acoustic guitar is that the instrument is the most important thing, which pretty much goes for recording anything. The place you should put your money is in the instrument, then the microphone, then the mic pre, or mic pre and microphone. But the instrument, if the instrument sounds great, it doesn't really matter how good of a mic pre or a microphone you have. Yes, if you have a Neve, it's great because they have great EQs on them and they sound good. My guitar is gonna sound good through any mic pre because it's a great sounding guitar. So always spend your money on the source. That is the key to recording and getting a great sound. That's all for now. I'm Rick Beato. If you're interested in the Beato book, you can write me at rickbeato1 at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.